Hi again everybody. So in this second tutorial uh, we're going to move into the new material that we covered in class last week. Uh, we'll start from the uh, sequencer uh, that we just built and go back into it and make some changes. Uh, so first of all I'm going to turn off the automatic spawning loop in my game functions and in my beat I'm going to turn off the sound generation rules except for one um, and remove the second line of our mm -hmm. rule so that when this actor overlaps or collides with the playhead it will play the bass drum and we can now call this actor bass drum and I'm going to put it onto the stage. Now what we want to be able to do is position and copy this actor so that rather than having a random beat pattern we can actually create our own. So to start with we're going to introduce the new concept of a rule based on touch and that is what we use when we want to be able to click on something and have it interact with the click. So when actor receives event touch is pressed, meaning when the mouse button, when the mouse is hovering over the actor and the mouse button is pressed. And now we're going to introduce the constrain attribute behavior. So while the mouse is clicked on this object, we can constrain its X position to the X position of the mouse. That's devices, mouse, position, X. And we can do the same thing for Y. We'll constrain the Y position to devices, mouse, position, Y. And this formula here makes a click and draggable object. Wherever I place it on the screen, by clicking and dragging, it will stay there. And when I'm no longer clicking on it, this rule is no longer active and therefore the constraint is removed. Now, the problem of course with this is that I'm no longer functioning on my beat grid. So I can position these actors. Let's make a couple of them. I can position them anywhere. Which can be very interesting, but makes it harder for us to generate a beat. So let's look at the trick we discussed in class of making this conform to a grid. In my expression editor, I didn't constrain the self position X to simply the game mouse position X, but I used a, um, uh, uh, an expression that combined rounding and multiplication to make it conform to a grid. So let's take a look at that. I used round mouse position x divided by whatever grid size I want multiplied by whatever grid size I want. And this is a little hard to wrap your head around at first. Let's just first of all take a look at what it does. I've done it only on my x coordinate. So you can see now my Y coordinate is still continuous. I can slide it anywhere on the Y, but my X conforms to a 25 pixel grid, and that allows me to place things within the beat. So why does this work? Well, rounding, as you know, takes a number with a fractional component and brings it to the nearest integer. So 1.2 rounds to 1, 1 1.9 rounds to 2. So if I am at 25, if my mouse position x is at 25 pixels, 25 divided by 25 is 1. 
which rounded off is still 1 times 25, places me at 25 pixels. But if I move my mouse slightly to the right, let's say 30 pixels, 30 divided by 25 is 1 point something. Rounded off, it's just 1 times 25 gives me the same location, so it won't move until my mouse moves by a certain threshold, which in this case is will be half of this value, or 12.5 12, 12 pixels. But since pixels don't really have 0.5, once I move it 13 pixels, it'll snap to the next location. And I can also do this same thing on the y-axis. I can say round. mouse position y divided by 60 times 60. And now this will conform to a 60 pixel grid on the y-axis. So as I move them up and down, they stick in 60 pixel increments. And as I move them back and forth, they stick in 25 pixel increments. So now I've created a nice drag and drop beat grid. And we also want to be able to duplicate and delete these. So I extended that same idea of touch being pressed and combined it with a keystroke. So here's my new rule. When actor receives event touch is pressed and when actor receives event key and I can pick any key I want. I can do the left shift key. When, the, when, the, when we click on it and the left shift key is pressed, we'll have it spawn a new copy of itself. And we'll have it spawn relative to the actor, let's say 25 pixels to the right. So now I can move my beat around, and if I want to make another one, I hold down left shift and click and it makes another one. And of course each of these now becomes a movable element. And if I want to delete, I can take this same rule and in this case I'll try the right shift button. And when the right shift button is down, I'll destroy the actor. So I can position it. I can left shift to duplicate. And I can right shift to delete. And that really covers the two main additional functions that I want you to know about, which are actor receives event touch is pressed and constrain attribute. And also, additionally, this little formula for making things move constrained to a grid. And that's really it for tutorial number two. If I want to make more instruments, I can copy and paste my bass drum, call it snare, and all I need to do is change the sound that it's playing, and now that's my snare drum. And I'll change the color. In fact, I'll remove my previous color rules and just give bass drum and snare drum their own unique colors. And I'll just say my snare is green, and my bass drum is blue. And now, oh, I didn't remove the color rules from my bass drum. My snare is green. No, they're not. Let's go back into my snare drum and see why it's not playing the right sound. Ah, I didn't change it. Snare drum. There we go.
left shift duplicate. to it. Um, so be sure that you understand rules based on touch. Be sure that you understand constraint attribute and try to understand also this expression using the round to conform things to a grid. And if you can't totally grasp it, at least memorize it and learn how to use it. And I'd like to see all three of these uh, new aspects included in your Game Salad final project. Thanks for watching.